Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we have the opportunity to do a drag washer upgrade on a Penn Senator 4O, and uh, sometimes it's just the 113H, but it's the 4O reel. This one was brought in because the fellow said he was fighting a large fish and was actually smoking the drags. And if you look here, there's all kinds of uh, grease in that that probably got caught up in the, uh, the fight, spilled out of the side. And while well, he said, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure we lost all of that uh, drag power, can you please uh, change them out? And if they're the old style, which is the thicker washer that's asbestos, while well, the drag upgrade, which we're going to go to the five washer set, is a uh, increase in the max drag as well. So we're going to get started on that. We're going to do that by removing the exterior pieces first. And that includes the handle, the set screw that holds the handle screw on, and the star adjuster. And one of the things that looks like it happened here is that the, uh, the reel got in a little bit of a fight. Whoever serviced this reel the last time put that star adjuster on backwards. That's not why that little tag there uh, is bent, but uh, that is an indication of, uh, well, somebody just not paying attention to the details. How do I know it's backwards? There's a part number on the star adjusters. If you can read 10-349, that belongs on the back of the reel uh, or facing the inside side plate and not, the, uh, not externally. Why is that? Well, there's two sides to this star adjuster. One of them has a rather smooth side and one has a flat side. So we have a flat side here and we have a rounded over side on this side. So it makes it easier when you're using your finger to adjust. Well, I'm going to put that into a vise and just kind of straighten that out. I have a bench vise, you won't see it here. But while I'm doing that, I want to encourage you to sign up for uh, the subscription. It's free. And uh, it'll, sh it'll tell you when I'm posting new videos. And you can choose to watch those. Well, that, pressing that out in that uh, video helped nicely. Well, my videos cover all kinds of things. Today we're working on a saltwater trolling reel. Tomorrow we might be working on a, an ultralight uh, freshwater reel. And who knows what shows up. You're basically looking over my shoulder at projects that come into my shop. And, uh, well, I try to show you how to service the reels yourself. And if you have one of them, it's a great place to learn how to do it and keep those reels working for a long time to come. This is one of the older style 113Hs. How do you know that? You have an open side here that would allow you to change the drag washers without taking the side plate off. There's a big collar here and then there's a series of washers. Well, I'm going to take the whole side plate off because maybe you have the 113 that encases those and you have to do it from the inside. So I'll show you that. And the other, the other reason is if those are the thick washers, they're probably uh, frozen on and, and won't come out easily. Well, some will. Yeah, these are the older ones. You can see the damage on that, uh, that one alone. So this is going to be a good improvement to the performance of this reel. It's a nice upgrade, and uh, we're going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to clean as I go here, just to get that old material that was left over from the that drag fight, put that inside as well. We're going to use a flat bladed screwdriver now to remove the post screws. That's another indication that this is an older reel. So there was several iterations of the 4.0 reel and it started with this one which has that opening. The 113H means high speed. Uh, before the H came out you had the black sided ones and the black sided ones were a lower speed reel. This one uh, increased the retrieve speed which is perfect for uh, trolling. Well when I take the screws out I put them onto my table because I want to make sure that the screws are the same size. Now I know something you don't know they're not the same size. The three screws that go into the reel seat here are shorter than the other reel posts. Well it, we were talking about the iterations of the reel. Posts were first, and then they came to a uh, part that combined these two posts. that had a uh, kind of an aluminum backing, and uh, 
Well, it didn't last very long, and I just did one where uh, the screws are completely frozen in it, and that's probably one of the reasons why they changed that one again. The last iteration was a half frame, and it was graphite as opposed to uh, the aluminum or the metal ones. So, uh, interesting evolution there. So you can date your reels, or at least know what generation you're working on by that. So the first generation has the open ones with the thick drag washers. The next generation has the closed encased one. Uh, and then you, you look at the posts or the post setup to do that. Now, even though the case frames were different, the internal workings are essentially the same. So you can service any pen uh, 113H doing the pr process I'm doing here. But you can see those really did get beat up pretty good. To remove this case then, wow, this is a little bit of dirt on it there. You want to move this to the release position for free spool. So free spool is on, if you will. And we're going to remove the four screws in the side plate. When I do that, I like to cup my hand because eventually that side plate is going to come out and underneath that side plate there's going to be a dog and a spring and I want to make sure that we don't have that spring go flying or get lost because that would be another piece that you would have to purchase. Most of these have the flat spring as the, uh, the dog spring in the early versions and eventually they switched over to a, uh, a coil spring. We'll find out what's in this one. I don't want to lose it either way. All right, that last one may or may not come out. When you know that you're loose on all of those, and this is in the uh, free spool on position, just push the bridge through. Oops, I forgot. I'm going to close this up for a moment. You have to remove that trim ring. You'll see it here, the main gear actually fits under that ring. And I'm noticing here right now that I have a coil spring on that anti-reverse dog. So the anti-reverse dog is moved off. I'm just going to use a pick to get that spring before it shoots anywhere. And I have to go searching for it. When I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. That's just where that one landed. And now we can pull this assembly out. And you can see that that reel probably got very hot. He didn't tell me what he was fighting, but it's pretty obvious that uh, he had a good fight on his hands there. I'm just going to remove the rest of the internal pieces. We'll do a cleanup on this one. Again, the idea is to show you how to upgrade that drag stack. But since you have to open the reel up anyway, you might as well do the service on the reel. And this one needs that service. So might as well just kind of do what it doesn't take that much longer to do. All right, I'm going to take a penetrating oil here. I'm going to use it as a degreaser. I'm just going to kind of baste off and let that stuff sit for a moment here as we get over to the, the drag washer stack. I think if I recall, these are asbestos drag washers. I never really have gotten a, a clarification on it, but it's a very hard, thick washer that looks like, uh, well, the old brake shoes on cars. We should be able to remove the main gear now. Sometimes if this one got smoked, it might be tough. Nope, this one's working fine. I'm going to see if we can't Take the dog off as well. That's your anti-reverse dog. That's going to go into the porch tray. There's a lot of grease on there. That's why I wear this protective glove. And we're going to see if we can just arrange some things, put the springs back in here. And there's a, a pin holding on the gear sleeve here. I'm going to see if we can push that pin through. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. I'm going to use an awl to do that. Well, that's not that easy. I'm going to take that off camera for a moment. We're going to just grab a hammer and center the punch and poke it through. Okay, well that didn't take much, so it was probably just my hand strength. But again, I just took my awl, pushed it in, just a gentle tap on it, and pushed it through. And uh, it should come off at this point. It is. I'm noticing right now that one of the things we're going to have to do is get a replacement washer here. This one is broken. 
So as part of my overall service, we'll have to come back and make sure that we re re replace that. Okay, maybe we even have that in the set there, I'm not sure. But we want to clean up the bridge first. There's a lot of dry grease on there. And again, he tells me he was in quite a fight. I believe he was working on with a shark on it and uh, got it smoked. So if that reel gets hot, well, greases are going to melt and then they're going to reform as they cool off. So some of this may be that. But I suspect a lot of this is just that it hasn't been serviced in a while. And an indication of that is that little washer there that uh, belongs on your stack. Once we do that, we can take a a little bit of fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease. We'll go ahead and put some grease onto the shaft. You'll notice that there is an indentation on the shaft up here. That's where that pin is going to ride and that's going to hold this in. Before I put that on, I just want to run a cotton swab through the hole in this uh, gear sleeve here just to clean it out. There's always a little bit of something in there. And we can put that back on. I'm just going to gently tap that pin back in. I'm using a dead blow hammer so that I don't injure the metal. Okay, that's that. Now we can turn our attention to that main gear and replacing the drag washers, which is kind of what we were asked to do to begin with. Or these really are set in this case. Yes, these are the thicker older style washer, so we want to get those out of the way. And one of the ways, if you're having trouble getting these out, one of the ways to, to kind of expedite that is to turn the main gear over. There are the, uh, the washers that are going to hold it from to the, the gear sleeve. And a lot of times you can get those out simply by tapping them. And pulling up now on them. Yeah, so these look like old brake shoes. There's a lot of wear, they're, gl they're glossed over. And the other thing with this is there's only three washers in here. Well, max drag is a function of surface area. So when you go from three drag washers to five drag washers, you're increasing the drag washers by 40% or, there or thereabouts. Well, you can see that they weren't effective because they were uh, kind of glued on to these metal washers. So we want to take our time to get this old glue off. It's not glue, it's the material from the dry washers. And if you need to, you can kind of scrape it off. You can use a utility knife like I'm going to use here or something else. Well, while I'm doing the cleanup, I want to encourage you if you have a question about this reel or any reel in particular to leave that question in my uh, comment section to this video. It doesn't have to be about this reel. But if you have that question I will try to answer it for you and uh, it can be on anything. I had a service a reel. Recently I got some where do I get a part kind of questions. Those sorts of things. I'll try to do my best to point you in the right direction. All right, the rest of it is just uh, tarnish at this point. Looks like we got some on the back here as well. And that'll just take a moment. So I think what we'll do since I got to clean three of these up is we'll just turn the camera up and come back. Well, I was going to proceed with the cleanup and then I realized the upgrade kit has new metals in it because, well, there's more washers. So I don't need to do that. Step saved. That's fantastic. Let's put those off to the side. We're going to check the teeth on the main gear now just to make sure they weren't damaged in that uh, fight that the customer had. And uh, we'll just use a hard brush. We're going to pull through on the teeth to make sure that the old greases and that are out of the teeth. We saw that general meltdown on the, on the greases, so we want to make sure that all of that gets. Uh, removed. It looks like a little bit on the side here. We'll get rid of that. I'm using a, a utility blade as a scraper. If you do that, please watch your fingers. 
All right, that's good. The teeth are nice and clean. The inside of the case is clean. And all we have to do is see if we get that, uh, that one little bottom washer here with that upgrade. I'm not sure it's going to be in this kit. If not, we're going to have to stop for a moment and find the, uh, the replacement washer for that. So these are the HT100 washers. We have this set and we do not have that small washer. So I'm going to turn that uh, camera off and we'll be right back. Okay, I wasn't able to find an exact match, but I found one from a different pen wheel and uh, it's a Teflon washer. So the other one was a little bit smaller. So let's talk about this for a moment. You can use a substitute washer. It's a padding and it's going to its purpose is to hold that anti-reverse dog from kicking inward. As long as the center core is the same, which it is, and as long as the outside diameter does not interfere with the teeth on the main gear, you're good to go. So we'll just put that down, just like that. And now we can install that main gear. Before I install it, we're going to put a healthy dose of that fishing wheel grease on. We've already cleaned the teeth and we've checked the teeth to make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not bent or broken or anything. And now we can put that main gear on. And now we have a set here that is six metals and five of the HT100 washers. The HT100 washers are Penn's version of a hybrid carbon tex. Now most of the time, if you have a number that's odd, uh, you would think that you would start with a metal, but you don't. There's two, uh, two washers to finish the process and actually to build up because the drag stack for the three washers is actually taller than if you just put the, uh, the five stack in without it, that added washer. When you look at the washers, we've got two different sets. We've got a set that has flat sides on the in interior. Those are going to match to the flat sides on the gear shaft. And then you have two that have a circle interior with two points. Those are going to match to the slots here. So one set of these holds the main gear. The other so set holds the gear sleeve. And when you press down on them, they hold each other. And that's how you stop the wheel with the drag washers. These washers can go in dry or they can go in greased. I choose to use the fishing wheel grease on these. This is a drag grease itself. This is uh, Cal's Universal Drag Grease. I dip the washer in, I give it a nice coating and I wipe off the excess. That'll keep these uh, washers from drying out. As I mentioned, it's kind of a little bit different, but we have uh, the three thin washers and we have one that's thicker. That thicker washer is the last washer. All right, first one in and we alternate now. We go from one of the ones that have the flat interior to one of the eared washers. We're going to do the same thing. There's no excess on that. I get pretty good at it after a while. But a light coating of grease. Now we want to find the one that has the ears on it. We'll go ahead and put that in. the third of the washers. So again, max drag is a function of surface area. When you have more surface area, you have more holding power. And uh, that's why this will increase the performance of that reel. So next time, it may not smoke because he's got extra holding power there. All right, I was talking along the way, but we now have the last of the eared washers goes on. And this one's always you got to watch out for this last one because it, it's a flush fit. So when you go to reinstall, if that case comes out at all, you're going to lose the fit on that and you're going to have a little bit of a problem in real performance. Right. That one goes on. The last of the thin key washers and then the cap washers. So that's our drag stack for this. If we didn't have any cleanup, uh, well, you just pop that right back in and you've done your overhaul. But because we're kind of at a point here where we need to make sure that the reel is, is okay. I mean, we have it all out. We might as well service it. As long as we're doing that, let's do that. So if you were just interested in how to install the upgrade, just go get something to, to drink, a beverage of your choice, and uh, 
come on back in a few minutes and we'll have this cleaned up and ready for reinstall. Okay, so the side plate is nice and clean now. A little bit of grease along that eccentric. Let's see if we can get that out of there. And we can go ahead and put the, the cap back on. Now, now again, if you have the one that has the, the gears in case, that's fine. If you have the one that kind of comes out this way, the earliest version, they're all pretty much the same uh, coming in. I got a little bit more cleanup to do here, so let's finish this jack. Let's make sure we get all the old greases off. And when I clean these up, I like to, to use the least abrasive approach possible. So you saw me using steel wool on the one, that's because the, the piece was kind of gunked up. If I can get it with a paper towel rather than that, I would like to do that. All right, one more piece here. We're going to take the penny gear and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to brush through the teeth, make sure that those channels are clear. And they are. All right, so a little bit of grease onto the pinion gear. Get it in that slot where it's going to ride on your yoke. Next up then would be to grease the yoke. Hold the yoke because it looks like, well, an oxen or a farm team's yoke. Those two go like that. You're going to take the two springs. Those go in the crevices or inserts in, in that gear side plate. We're going to oil the bearing in the back. And now we can go ahead and put that part of the assembly in. There's two sides to that pinion gear, the side with the slot and the ring face out. Put that over, center it over the springs and push down. Then take your jack, kind of work it over the top of the retaining stud and that's how your uh, gear side yoke, pinion gear, springs and jack are arranged. Next. With the, spring, uh, with the screws that we've taken out, find a fully threaded screw. There's two different ones in this uh, package. Push down on your uh, pinion gear. Insert the main assembly. And now get your spring that's got the fully threaded piece on it. Push that through. I said spring, I meant screw. Find your gear. You have the reverse dog, and it sits like this. So there's a 90 degree piece here, turn, that faces there so we can have a cavity for the spring. Find that little spring. And mine was in the parts tray, so I knew where to look for it. And then start and just, I like to lay it this way and just kind of wiggle it in with my finger so that it sits in that cavity just like that. And once you do that, rotate the bridge across and then line up the hole for that screw with the hole in the bridge and get that started. Just a couple of turns. I don't put it all the way down because you need a little bit of room when you go to install the other pieces. There's a partially threaded screw You'll see it, it's just on the top. I like to alternate. After I put that first one in, I like to go to the top of the other side. That keeps equal tension on the bridge. Then you can go to the bottom of that side. And now I guess I can finally take my hand off that piece. Get the grease off of this screw. That's another partially threaded. And those go through the springs. That's a partially threaded one because the shoulder on the screw might catch if it was fully threaded, it might catch on those springs. Okay, that's that. One there, one here. Tighten them all down. And uh, at this point, we can take that collar, put that on. And because that one little piece always seems to want to jump out of there, that last eared washer, I'm going to put this on hold it all in place. And tighten that down. 
I'm going to remove the handle now because it's easier with the handle off to put the screws through the side. Give this a test. Make sure that it's turning nicely, which it is. Go ahead and make sure that the pre spool works, which it does. Turn it again if you like. And then we can close that back up. One more thing to do before we let this go, there's a bearing on the other side. You want to do the same thing here. Just clean up the debris that might be in there. Take your fishing reel oil, oil up the bearing. Check the back of the spool. If there's old greases and that on there, get rid of them. And we can go ahead and put this back on. Okay, a little bit of grease onto the main shaft of the spool. Go ahead and get your trim ring. It also has some grease on the inside, so take a moment to clean that off. And find this slot in your spool or on your gear side plate where that little harness lug goes. And then you can kind of match them up. Before I reinstall that, that's a good place to take the polish and just work off any of the excess pieces in that that may have fallen on there. One more piece to grease, that's the shoulder of the jack here. And we can take this now and install onto your reel. Lining up your harness lug is the best way to do that, but I don't like to start the screws in the harness lug because you have to center a couple of different holes. I would rather get two screws started in the bottom of the reel to hold it so I can take the pressure off of my hand to go ahead and do the next part. If you're having trouble lining them up, use that pick that you were using for the When you push the stud out of the gear and just put it into a hole in the bottom that'll help you align and then you should be able to get that screw going let's tighten that one down come over to the one on the other side here these are the longer screws remember i said that there's two different size screws the cross posts get the longer screws Make sure that you are using them. If you don't, if you put the longer screws in the real seat where that pick is at the moment, what will happen is that that short of that length of that screw will come through the real seat. You may catch your line on the other side of it. So the short one that we just put in there is correct, and we'll come up top here and we can align that that last one up top. Go for a longer screw again. You may have to pull up on that like I just did to, to get the clearance you need to get that screw through the lug. And we can tighten this one down. And we have a couple more screws left. Well, in the time remaining, if you're still here with me, I guess you must be enjoying watching the video. So again, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, use that notification button and uh, that'll help you to see when I'm posting. I try to post every day and you'll see things like this. This is a little bit different. It was a complete service of the reel but the reel was pretty much in because they had burned out the drags and uh, that was the cause of the customer's concern. Well he's going to walk away with a completely serviced reel and an upgraded drag system uh, in addition to just the pure service of it. Okay, we got one more, then we're going to put the handle on and give it a test. How do I know there's one more? Because that's the only screw remaining in my parts tray. Alright. So these 4-0 Senators have been the workhorse for commercial fishing and charter boats for a long time. 
and uh, they, they've proven their worth. All right, there's a little shim washer that goes between the handle and the adjuster. Set your handle on now. We'll come back and tighten this up. And we'll see how we did. Anytime you can get a 40% or so increase in max drag, uh, that's welcome. It's Max drag isn't everything. I mean, if you're trout fishing, you don't need 40 pounds of drag. But uh, in the big, big game reels like this one, it does mean something. And it's uh, important to have that. All right, we've tightened down the nut. We've made sure that the scallop is aligned with that hole so that we can put the last piece in, which is the set screw. And you won't get that screw in if that scallop is not aligned to that hole. So take that off to the side. Let's see how we did now. Oh, this might be a little bit tough because he's got that swivel on there, but let's spin it. Spins easy enough. I'm not going to go wrecking it. We have a lot of play in that spool, so you adjust that spool play with the side bearing. You want slight movement, but nothing more than slight movement. Okay. That's good. We were in free spool. Let's put it over to uh, retrieve mode. And, and again, that's uh, that's annoying, but this reel is working, and we want to check to make sure that the the drags tighten down, and we're ready to go. So that's the service of a 113H Penn Senator 40, aka, and uh, that's how to upgrade the old asbestos drag sack with the three washers to the more modern uh, 10 washer set. And uh, well, the proof will be in the pudding as they say. When he takes this fishing, he'll have a lot more grip and he won't be toasting the, uh, the washers. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more again, please subscribe. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.